Hello and welcome to the NNL Pro Tournament. The path to pro begins here. I'm Alex Cunningham alongside William Marchese for the second women's semifinal between Rachel Franz and Abby Clark. Will, these were two women who wowed us in the first round. I expect nothing less of them in the semifinals. I mean, when you have the best of the best competing in this tournament, these two women had to prove themselves by winning one match already. So now that we have two winners going against each other who know what they need to do to get the job done, what more they could you ask for? Well, we'll find out in a little bit, but just a reminder, it is up to you and only you to decide who had the better grip gauntlet. They each get two minutes and can't touch the ground. You guys should know the drill by now. So let's hop in and meet our two competitors in this semifinal match. Rachel Franz qualified for this competition on the heels of an incredible season five, winning six of her seven competitions and finishing second in the power rankings. She's also won two competitions this season at Warrior Factory Syracuse and Build Machine Fitness. Rachel may have had the best opening of any athlete in the first round of the tournament, with an incredible lache line, which she followed with a series of tough grip obstacles. Abby Clark remains one of the NNL's top athletes. She finished first in the power rankings for adult women in Season 5, in addition to finishing third in the World Championship and winning the World's Strongest Ninja Competition. She's followed that up with another top 10 this season in the Elite Female Power Rankings, and number one for the Northeast Elite Women. Abby's first round gauntlet provided a unique mix of powerful ashamings and a wide variety of intense grips. Well, you could say that Abby has the more accomplished resume, but Rachel came out of the gate strong in the last round. Yes, yes, she did. And I think that it would be beneficial to anyone facing Rachel Franz in this tournament to not overlook her. She might not be as big of a name as Abby Clark, but history has shown just from this tournament already that the bigger name, so to speak, is not the guaranteed winner. Yeah, absolutely. We lost our world champion, Tiana Weberly in the first round to Addie Herman and we could very easily lose our strongest ninja in this round if that's how the voters go. Right. And in the male division, uh, RJ Roman, who finished third in the world championship, lost to True Becker. Well, this is going to be an interesting matchup for sure. Let's start with Rachel Franz and see what she's got. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Rachel Franz, back with round two of the NNL Pro Series. Let's do this. Rachel back at Warrior Factory Buffalo. She had a huge start last time. How is she going to start this time? Oh, looks like she's starting with the salmon ladder, which is always a good point. Going up a rung. Let's see how many rungs she'll go. There's two. And I and think she's, she's eyeing up yep. the lache. Yeah, she changed her grip. And, that and is there's one the link. links. Two links. That's what got her the victory last time as she looks like she's eyeing up that banana next. Oh, man, she's got a good grip there. And moving on to uh, the truss. Any more bananas? Let's see where she does. Grabs another banana. She did have a good variety of laches and holds last time. Yeah, Warrior Factory has a good selection of obstacles for her to choose. So let's see what she can pull out. Now, cannonball. a mix of both. Big cannonball lache, maybe to that ring. Can she make that jump? Kind of low to the ground makes it more difficult. She's going up oh. to the bar, actually. It's a little bit uh, more difficult. Yeah. Going up is never easy with a lache, but she made that look flawless. And now onto some bungees, and she... Whoa! I cannot believe that Rachel just dropped like that. That... She had so much time left on the clock, Will. It, and it just came out of nowhere. It, it just seemed like everything was just going smooth. And all of a sudden, just, just like that, she was down. I, I don't even know what to say. Yeah, I mean, it was still a very impressive gauntlet. She started with the salmon ladder. She had those linking laches that won hearts in the last round. And she did have some pretty tough grips. I, I will give her that. But I felt like she had a lot more to do. One of the rules of the gauntlet is that you're allowed to try multiple times. You know, this isn't, this isn't a traditional ninja course where you only get one try. You know, let's... 
let's be honest because we wouldn't be able to enforce that rule anyway so just give it another shot like try another day you know i i'm very surprised that not only did she fall there but that that's what she decided to, to go with we did try to enforce it in testing and transparency but we decided to go with this format instead um abby clark you're up next the doors open let's see what you got Guys, 0 for 2. It's called the Pro Tournament. <laughs> Abby also back at her first round facility. This is Center Court Chatham. And headed for a... Oh, I thought it was a bar slide. And so that's gonna... Oh, it is a bar slide. It is. It's a bar slider. Oh, man. They got some good obstacles here. And now going on to a circuit board, it looks like. Oh, my. Abby wowed us with her strength in the quarterfinals. Not holding back for the semifinals absolutely you have to pull out all the stops in every round especially the deeper you go and she is just blazing through the circuit board yeah i mean she's made it look so smooth gonna get that yeah. last peg in there and that's really the first bobble she's even had yeah and honestly it wasn't even that bad of a bobble now on to a cliffhanger and after the circuit board she's got to be tired making this obstacle even harder than it already is and a Ooh. pull oh, up. Oh, oh Great my. move. The height difference of those two ledges, plus having to turn 90 degrees like that, cannot be overstated. An impressive looking lache right after. And I see a salmon ladder, my friend. That we do. Could we have two salmon ladders in this matchup? It looks like we're headed that way. Except she's going to go across. Well, let's see if she goes up. All right, just straight across. And That's what fun. do we have here? I can't tell. Maybe a thick pipe. I take uh, that back. She's headed back over to some cliffhangers. It's going to shake it out before she does anything else. You know, Not I think that's strategy. a bar behind that cliffhanger. I see. Now she's on yes. the doorknobs. There we go. Shout out, Monstro. I assume those are Monstro. High quality, as always. Onto the devil steps. And these look like hard yeah. devil steps. Not a lot of room for hand placement. No, these are these are little boys. Already starting to run out of steam. On, I think her on. time might have actually expired by now. But you can see she does not have much left on, in the pull, pull, tank pull. trying to push for yeah, every you, you, inch. Almost there. Come on. And Come on. there yeah. she goes. And unfortunately her grip gives out right as her time expires. A very similar gauntlet to her first round, but, I mean, her first round was really good, and so was this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I feel like there's a lot of variety in that gym that she has yet to fully tap into. And if she were to move on to the next round, I really want to see her tap into some of those other obstacles. And it feels almost unfair going against Abby Clark because she has such good grip and such good finger strength that she's able to do all of these really difficult cliffhangers with ease. She had that crazy 90 degree upwards transition. It, it just seems like it's almost a cheat code being able to hang for that long. Yeah, the 90 degree cliffhanger transition was my highlight uh, of that run. And I think that... Between doing stuff like that and the circuit board, she, you know, she she's she's got great grip. She she can hang on stuff for a while. And I think you had a point. She did leave some room on the table. Certainly can wow us in the finals if she were to make it there. It is up to you to decide. I think I might have even liked her first round gauntlet better if I'm if I'm going to be critical. But it's not my place to be critical. It is these two gentlemen's place to be critical. See what I did there. Here are yes. Lucio Batista and Henrik Frauren. Will, the floor is yours. All right, gentlemen. Thank you for once again joining us in this conversation for the semifinals of the pro tournament. This time around, we're going to start with Henry, and we're going to discuss Rachel first. So, unfortunately, her run got cut pretty short, I would say. What do you think happened, and do you think she should have filmed another attempt? Uh, yeah, well, first let's see. Um, so it, it looks like her her uh, grip wallet only lasted about a minute fifteen, um, and we asked for for that full two minutes. 
Uh, it's funny that you say that because up until um, she grabbed that last bungee and I, I, I want to say either she peeled or was just totally gassed or maybe she just wasn't feeling whatever the next move was. Um, I liked everything up until that point. Like I loved how she linked all those laches. Um, what comes to mind though is, is a lackluster finish when uh, she kind of just like peeled off um, off that bungee. Like she grabbed it and like stretched extra low and then I thought she was going to power out of it and she kind of did and then just like ended up splashing into the water. Um, yeah, the answer is absolutely. I think in this situation you take a, an, like an hour rest or whatever it is, maybe the next day and you, and you re, you do the, you do the video again. You try to last the full two minutes, unfortunately, um, to answer your question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Lucio, uh, to, to be a little bit more on the positive side, I would say, uh, once again, I feel like Rachel had a, had a strong start in her run. Um, do you think that a strong start is more important than a strong finish in a gauntlet? That's a really tough question. Will. um, I, I personally feel like they're both equally important. You can, I, I would want to see consistency throughout um because if you're just really giving either or a, a strong start or a strong finish it's kind of hit or miss I, I would say maybe if i had to answer it 100 percent, i would say a, a strong finish because it's showing to me that even at the end of this entire grip call you could still push out something really impressive that that would maybe where i'd go with it um but yeah rachel she she did give us like you know a good beginning there. She did look a little bit more reserved, uh, taking a few extra swings on a couple of the obstacles. Where in the past she she was just linking stuff right away, not taking as many extra swings. Um, but yeah, I'm not really too sure what happened with the the shortened time. All right, uh, now moving on to Abby, uh, we're gonna move. We're gonna stick with Lucio for this question. Um, as opposed to Rachel, I would say uh, a bit more staticky uh, than compared to what we saw with uh, Rachel's run, uh, it, it, her beginning specifically. Um, but I would say one of the key static moves was the big 90 degree uplift uh, cliffhanger move that she pulled. Are those the types of moves that for the static obstacles that you want to see? I, yeah, I think that those are definitely very impressive. When you're seeing things that are big pull-throughs and crossing big margins like that, that shows an immense amount of grip. It shows an immense amount of power, uh, just in general. So those are definitely things we want to see in static obstacles as well. I mean, the whole run was was really well thought out. You could tell that, uh, I believe it was Joe keeping on time. I, it just... All around, it, it seemed very cohesive, well thought out. The movements were planned and, and you know, choreographed. So everything worked really well. Um, definitely use the time accordingly. All right, moving on to Henry. Uh, one of the negatives, I would say, uh, for Abby's run is that her ending just kind of petered out. Uh, is there any way that you think... Uh, a competitor should make sure they end their run and how could she improve if she moves on to the finals yeah um again it's a difficult thing um like lucio alluded to we everything was well choreographed like the the plan of the obstacles and um she actually by the time she was on the devil steps she was already hanging for two minutes and like 15 seconds so unless the intro uh yeah i don't think the intro went that long she was she was over two minutes and um, that girl has a gas tank, but but uh, it's it's very impressive. Um, it was a, cool to see a different little, a little bit of a different side of her. She, usually, she's like flying through the air the entire time, but this time she kind of I like the circuit board into that cliffhanger. Um, very impressive uh, all around. But um, yeah, so in a in a perfect grip gauntlet, you get your two minutes. You're going max effort moves, and you're landing on some type of platform at two minutes, and not even showing the audience how gassed you are. But at the same time, I personally like to see it. I mean, they're going hard for us. They're going hard for the end now. They're going hard to win this thing. Um, these women are get, they're pumped. I want to ask them in a, like a private interview, how pumped were you at when you were doing that last devil step move? Like how gassed were you when you just fell from just a regular ledge? All those moves like added up on your body, the lactic acid in the forms is insane. 
but but very impressed with that with that run. But I do agree with you. Ideally, you want to finish finish through. Indeed, indeed. All right, so now it's time for the moment of truth, gentlemen. We're going to start with Henry this time around. Who should move on to the final round? Should it be Rachel or should it be Abby? Thanks, Will. Um, this one is a pretty easy answer, and and it wouldn't be as easy an answer if um, Rachel gave a two minute gauntlet. If she if she gave two minutes of obstacles probably would have been really close obviously hindsight's 2020 there's no way of knowing for sure um what we did see was a minute 15 and her failing a bungee um so it definitely goes to abby um by a by a large margin all right and lucio same question sir yeah well i'm i'm gonna have to agree with henry on this one as well it's really difficult when we have an athlete give us a shortened run we've seen it in the past um, we, we just want to see what can continue to happen for that time. And it's, it's really hard to, to give, you know, a, a nod to, a, you know, an assignment if half the assignments missing. So I'm going with Abby on this one for the win. All right. Well, thank you very much for your, uh, points, gentlemen. I always enjoy spending time with you guys. Same to you. Likewise. So there you have it, folks. Both our panelists agree. Abby Clark is the run that they preferred and they made their points very clear and I can perfectly understand why they chose to go in that direction. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what they think because the only thing that matters is how you vote in the vote for this round and you get to decide who moves on to the grand finals. Yeah, I could see this going either way, so make sure you make your voice heard. We have a link in the description to head over to our community tab, where you can vote for 72 hours only, starting right this very second. Yes, this very second, as you're watching this live, not as we're recording this, obviously. But one of these two is going to go on to the finals, and I cannot wait for that matchup. But in the meantime, we have a men's semifinal coming next week. Make sure you tune in for that. So until then, he's William Marchese. I'm Alex Cunningham, and we will see you next time on the NL Pro Show.